Deep in the far reaches of outer space, there once existed a civilization far more advanced than our own. The inhabitants of planet Krypton. The planet was governed by a revered council of elders, wise men, supermen. And yet for all their wisdom, they could not see that their planet was doomed. Only the visionary scientist Jor-El and his wife Lara sensed that the end was near. Though it was too late to save themselves, there was a chance to save Kal-El, their infant son. And so, as his parents watched in sadness, Kal-El left the ill-fated Krypton, bound for a new home. He would journey to a planet where his newfound powers could be utilized to fight evil and injustice. To a country where people would thrill to the very mention of his name. It was February 1938. Superman had arrived on Earth. Hi, I'm Dana Carvey. Just think, 50 years ago, Superman landed on the very spot where I'm standing right now. Well, actually, there are some people who think he landed here. And, and there are a few people who think that he might have landed here. But either way, it's just very exciting to be in the general area. Tonight, we're going to celebrate Superman's anniversary by taking a closer look at his life here on Earth. We're going to review his greatest adventures and examine his influence on our culture. But also, we're going to go inside the actual city of Metropolis and talk to the people who know him best, the Metropolitans, so that we can better understand America's greatest superhero. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky, it's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Yes, it's Superman. Strange visitor from another planet who came to Earth with powers and abilities far beyond those of mortal men. Superman, who can change the course of mighty rivers, bend steel in his bare hands, and who, disguised as Clark Kent, mild-mannered reporter for a great metropolitan newspaper, fights a never-ending battle for truth, justice, and the American way. of the Man of Steel with Dana Carvey. So I guess what I tried to emphasize in playing the part was Superman as a friend. Um, what if this guy really came from outer, outer space and just said, hi, I'm, I'm here to help? That's what made it work for its time where the others had worked for their time. Metropolis, the town that Superman calls home. This is where he lives, where he works, and where he's best loved. There's no sign of Superman yet, but it's still very thrilling just knowing that something really bad could happen and he could just fix it. I mean, like... This building here could just fall down on some people, or, uh, or this guy could injure himself in some way, and wow. <laughs> well, right now I'm at the corner of Superman Way and uh, Man of Steel Boulevard. If you think America loves Superman, check out how the people of Metropolis feel about him. Superman like is a hero because he, he does things, and he makes all children feel happy when they watch him. He's our great protector. That's the way I feel about it. He's, he's here to protect us on this earth. Superman is the only one out here who will, I, I think, risk his life to help others. Yeah. Other people come out here, they see you lying on the floor, whatever, they will not do yeah. nothing. Superman will try his best to help you with whatever he can do. From inside City Hall, one local official discusses the town's fascination with Superman. 
Yes, uh, we, we love our Superman, but don't get the wrong idea. Metropolis is not just a Superman town. No, it's, it's much, much more. Uh, there are, what, museums, uh, cafe life, um, theaters, great theaters. Yes, there are plenty of great cultural things in Metropolis, uh, an awful lot of things. The Metropolis Museum has the largest collection of Superman artifacts in the world. No other city even comes close. I believe Tokyo is second. Each new object that I acquire for the museum is one more piece in the puzzle, one more fragment in the mosaic that is Superman. He's a, a very busy man. Otherwise, I am sure that he would have visited us by now. When I was a kid, if I couldn't sleep, I would count Superman's powers. I'd usually get up to ability to drink the ocean, and I'd fall asleep just like that. It's Superman! One of the powers that Superman calls on the most is his super strength. But he has many more powers in his arsenal. He has super breath. He can see through walls. He's got heat vision. He can even understand German. But if there's one superpower we all dream about, it's his ability to fly. I could only fly like Superman instead of taking those hot subways. In his early years, Superman couldn't actually fly. He was able to leap as high as the tallest building, but he hadn't yet mastered the Earth's gravitational pull. Up, up, and away! Since that time, however, he's evolved into what many people consider the Nijinsky of the air. Over the years, Superman's abilities have never failed to amaze us. In fact, he set the standard by which all others must be judged. Don't press. Isn't that wild? What's interesting is the tape that don't lose. Now, well, don't lose. Uh, Superman and I took divergent paths with our powers. I mean, you know, he charted a course to free the world of evil, while I, I'm mainly an entertainer. Not that his feats of justice aren't entertaining. I mean, people do gather together when he works. But when I work, they pay. Unless they're under 12. Superman's powers come in very handy in Metropolis, the city which annually leads the nation in accidents and natural disasters. Metropolis, it's an exciting town. It's exciting, it's stimulating. It's nothing Superman can't handle. In fact, that's our motto. Metropolis, nothing Superman can't handle.
Everywhere you look in Metropolis, you can see proof of Superman's heroic deeds. Most of them have been covered in the media for decades, from averting disasters to saving hundreds of lives. But then there's the smaller acts of heroism, the, the things that Superman does that are never publicized, but are just as important. Come on. It's all right. Here you go, miss. Gee, thanks, mister. Well, I was supposed to go to the senior prom with Brian, but then about 7 o'clock, Mr. Conley phoned and said that Brian had just come down with food poisoning and couldn't make it. Well, I just about decided to go alone when all of a sudden the doorbell rang and it was him, Superman, standing there with a big corsage. He said he'd be honored to escort me to my prom and I said yes. Oh, he was such a good dancer. I still think your father called him. Oh, he was wonderful. I loved my senior prom. Superman, I liked him better before when he was more subtle. Saving a cat from a tree, straightening out the handlebars on a kid's bike. Now he's flashier, he's more into spectacle. I don't know, man. I guess he don't want to repeat himself. Given everything he's done for this town, it's no wonder that Metropolis is Superman crazy. What are you ladies doing here? We're here to buy tickets to the play about Superman. The one-man show? Yes, I hear it's really clever. There you have it. Well, in preparing for the role of Superman, I talked with people who know him. I've read everything ever written about him. And what I found is a vulnerable fellow, but one with a strong sense of purpose. A great deal like Mark Twain, except, of course, Superman can fly. And he has heat vision and a lot of other powers that Twain didn't possess. Powers that I have to convey with a subtle raising of the eyebrow or lowering of my voice. You just have to feel it. You know what I mean? It's a challenge that I truly Superman's 50th anniversary will continue. I don't think I ever had as much fun working on a picture <clears throat> as I did on Superman. And especially for being the first Superman, because I felt like I was a creator. I created it, I made him look like this, and I made him strong, and they believed me. Now I'll ask the questions. Who is Superman? Think. You must have some clue to him. No. None. Could it be that he hides behind the darkest disguise of all? Could it be that he is a woman? Superman? A woman? For years, the people of Metropolis have been trying to determine the secret identity of Superman. But Superman's always had the perfect disguise. So simple, yet so effective. Hey, where'd the host go? What? Right here, same guy. Hi, Lars. Hi, Clark. Hey! Clark Kent, meek, mild-mannered, the complete opposite of Superman. Freak. In fact, this disguise is so successful that even those closest to him haven't discovered they are one and the same. Oh. oh, I was just having a wonderful dream. You weren't dreaming by any chance that you were Superman? That's exactly what I was, Lois. And I was flying you through the air. That wasn't a dream, Mr. Kent. As far as I'm concerned, it was a nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> there is one exception. A man who has an intimate association with both Clark Kent and Superman. You know, Superman's job is to save the world. My job is making sure he looks good doing it. I get all the names, Captain Marvel, Batgirl, Superman. He's a nice kid. Now, this one time, Clark Kent came over in a big panic looking for Superman's costume. Well, I double-checked, he double-checked, and I said to him, it's not here. Maybe it was stolen. If this was Superman's costume, he'd be wearing it, wouldn't he? Maybe he took it off on account of he wanted to be the other guy. 
What are you talking about? You know. Everybody figures Superman is really two guys. When he isn't being Superman, he's being the other guy. Last night, he was being the other guy. So you're saying Superman and Clark Kent are the same person? Well, uh, let's just say they never came in with their dirty laundry at the same time. And so Clark Kent, strange visitor from another planet, takes the first step toward dedicating his amazing powers to the cause of justice. He has resolved to keep secret his Superman identity and to adopt a pose of mild-mannered timidity as Kent in order to safeguard the masquerade. And in order to be at a place where he can learn immediately of any emergency that might require his help, he seeks a job as reporter on a great metropolitan newspaper. You take me to a newspaper office. Uh, which one? Uh, which one do you recommend? The Daily Planet is our biggest and best. Well, fine, that's good enough for me. Right. The Daily Planet. Every day, Clark Kent walks through those doors, goes upstairs, does a little paperwork, comes back down, goes over there, has a hot dog, gets in that phone booth, changes into Superman, saves some lives, comes back, writes the story, maybe some quick coffee, another change into Superman, saves more lives, gets home who knows when. 17 grand a year. Oh, the Daily Planet is a great metropolitan newspaper. I'd have to say that Perry White made all the right moves. He's got a very streamlined staff. What has he got? Essentially three reporters, plus all those people in the back who put the paper out, and they give the people exactly what they want. They give them Superman stories. Superman stories as they happen. I'd have to say Metropolis is a one newspaper town. I guess you could say that Metropolis is a two paper town. There's the Proclaimer and uh, that other paper with the predictable Superman stories. Now granted, the planet gets lots of scoops, but we've got Bob Green and uh, Garfield, that lovable cat who, uh, you know, does all the things you wish you could. Eats too much, hates Mondays. And uh, Jumble, that scrambled word game. <laughs> Dunkley. Gee, I wonder what that's going to be. Dunkley. You got Clark Kent. That's a quiet guy. His manners are on the mild side. But he's an incredibly fast typist. And when you hold the presses as often as the planet does, you don't want Molasses Joe working the keys. Hold page one for a replate. Hold page one for possible replate. Preston wants to know how much longer to hold the front page. Well, I'll give it another 10 minutes, and if oh, I'll tell him. Thank you. Hello, mm. Pete. The reason Perry White doesn't like being called Chief is that he's very sensitive to the plight of a North American Indian. Don't call me Chief! Don't call me Chief! And don't call me Chief, either. Yes, Chief. Sir? Uh, Jimmy Olsen, the perennial cub reporter slash photographer. And he's torn between the two jobs. And to me, there's no contest. Jimmy is a very underrated photographer. Hey, let me get a picture of you cutting the cake. Come on over here, Lois. Yeah, stand right here. He can take the mundane and give it a surreal treatment and force the eye to see or re-see the image in a different light. Now smile pretty. He's extraordinary with a camera, but he's not a writer. In his own words, in his own paper, here is Jimmy Olsen on the state of the American economy today, huh? All right. Jeepers, the deficit's high. Sure be better if it's stabilized. Gee whiz. He calls that writing. Golly, Miss Lane, how come you get all the great stories? A good reporter doesn't get great stories, Jimmy. A good reporter makes, makes them great. great. Chief, here's that story on the East Side murder case. The way I see it, it's a banner headline, front page, with maybe one picture. There's only one P in rapist. Lois Lane operates on the snoop and scoop principle. Snoop around. Get that girl. Get in trouble. Get saved by Superman. Oh! Easy, miss. I've got you. you. You've got me? Who's got you? <laughs> and then the broad gets the scoop. Let's start with your vital statistics. How old are you? Over 21. Oh, I get it. You don't want anyone to know how old. OK. And how big are you? How tall are you? Uh, about 6'4". Six, 6'4". Four. Six, four, four. And uh, how much do you weigh? Mm, around 2, 225. Two, two twenty-five. Do you have a girlfriend? Uh, no, I don't. But uh, if I did, Miss Lane, you'd be the first to know about it. 
You know how there's certain people who meet each other and immediately know that it's right? And then there are these other couples that, well, they seem right, and everybody's rooting for them, but it never quite happens. Lois and Superman are like that. Newsflash, Lois Lane is not waiting around for Superman to ask her to marry him. I mean, look how full her life is. She's got a great career, great apartment. She's learning French. I think Lois should lower her standards a little bit. I've tried to fix her up with other men, but it's always, can he break through walls? Is he bulletproof? Does he understand German? I mean, just because Superman saves her a lot doesn't mean she's trying to trap him. I mean, she's accident prone. That's all. Superman will never commit to her. He's merely into the chase. Here, cheers. Cheers. For the first time in my life, everything's clear. I'm going to change into something more comfortable. No wonder mothers get gray. Lois Lane is not alone in her love for the Man of Steel. In fact, since his arrival on Earth, dozens of desirable women have tried to lure him from his ongoing crusade. Why did you kiss me first? It, I didn't think you'd let me later. Thank you, Mr. Asmucker. Why is it I can't get it on with the good guys? Recently, one Metropolis woman came forward claiming that she had once been passionately involved with the Man of Steel. She lives on the outskirts of town where she shares a trailer with her only son. Now, don't you dare get anything on that shirt, you hear me? the so-called love child of Superman. You know, uh, Junior here is a hybrid. That means he's, he's half Superman, half me. And he's got that X-ray vision. He does, but he's only got it in one eye. So he gets these terrible headaches that he gets, you know. Junior, lift up the Nova, honey. Go on, lift it up. <laughs> he, he'll, he's gonna do it. Lift it up! <clears throat> You know, Superman, when I met, this is a true story, when I met, when I met him, I was, uh, I was real surprised because he did not look like what I expected him with that cold, shiny black hair with that big curl coming down. He looked like he had had highlights in his hair or something. It looked kind of sandy colored. And he looked a lot like um, Sergio Franchi, the singer, the Italian singer. Real handsome, but skinny. Superman is tall, he's dark and handsome, and he's strong, and he's what every girl wants to date. He's got muscles on top of his muscles, and he's just gorgeous. He's not bald, and I don't anticipate he ever will be. Well, why he's good looking, I can't really tell you that. I mean, only his mother could answer that <laughs> question. I don't know why he's good looking, but he is good looking, though. <laughs> well, he's a decent looking man. When you spend a lot of time with someone, or with their artifacts, as the case may be, they seem to become more and more attractive, more captivating. You know, Superman's like that. When he first burst on the scene, he was powerful, athletic, ready for anything. After his war effort, he had seen more, he had done more. During the prosperous 50s, Superman looked more solid, more down to earth. Today, he's leaner and fitter. He's Superman of the 80s. Some women might look at him and say, gosh, he's gorgeous. But if there's one thing I've learned during my years at the museum is that there's more to Superman than just his good looks. A whole lot more. Let's face it, the guy's been around for 50 years and he still looks great. You know, all great artists have their imitators and Superman is no exception. Right, Ed? Best barber in Metropolis. Thank you. Look, in the sky, there's a plane. It's a boy. It's 
a frog. Not plain or bird or even frog. It's just little old me, huh? <laughs> Underdog. Shazam! During his time here on Earth, Superman has served as an inspiration for superhero hopefuls everywhere. Mighty Boss! Mighty Boss! Save me! Every aspect of the man, his powers, his costume, his exploits, has influenced the work of others. More powerful than the mightiest rocket. Able to fly around the world faster than you can say Super Pup. Even Metropolis has its share of would-be superheroes. Well, you know, that's, that's part of being a superhero. Oh, hey, I, I like being busy. It's yeah. Just... What we do is we work as a team. Absolutely. Right, you see, I have all the, the superpowers, uh, x-ray vision, I'm real strong. He can turn himself invisible. Whatever. But I can't fly. Cannot fly. Right. At all. No. But that's where I come in. See, because he can, he can fly. He can't do anything else, but he just flies beautifully. It's great. Well, uh, the way we work, see, uh, when hey. something happens, a crime or a catastrophe, whatever, I fly there and assess the situation and then immediately fly to him, wherever he is, tell him where the thing okay, is, what it is, what he needs to know five, to deal with the situation. I'm sort of an advanced, advanced man. Advanced man. Yeah. Right. See, he can't carry me. Not yet. Uh, he's been working out, and he, he's gotten to a point he can lift me. It's, it's, it's like a marriage, is, is what we say. It really is. It's, it's like a marriage. you got to work at it. But we vacation separately. Yeah. Can you teach me to fly? Oh. Of all the crazy things that you've done in the 15 years, and we've been Wait, married, man. this has been... Really... Do you mean to say that you've been married to her for 15 years? Yeah, 15 years. And they call me Superman. <laughs> will continue. It was a wonderful thing to do. And I'm, I'm, here I am sitting talking to you 36 years later and Superbed's still on the air. And I'm glad. You, you know, in life you don't do so many things that give people pleasure and that people love. When it comes to crime, Metropolis is the safest city in America. And that's because the Man of Steel takes care of every thug, hooligan, roughneck, rabscallion, flimflam man, flathead, crane top, shellmonger, coin, and crock bottom in this town. A popular downtown Metropolis hangout is Martin's Bar, where retired thugs get together to talk about old times. You want to know what my one regret is? What? The bullets we wasted. If I could get back all the money I spent on bullets, I'd be a rich man today. Yeah, me too. I knew his chest was bulletproof. I just kept shooting on the chance that maybe one would get through. You know, maybe if the angle was right. But there was something about that chest that was so inviting. That big S. You just wanted to shoot it. Oh, and Superman got such a big kick out of that. <laughs> Your aim is bad, Luigi. Now, what are you going to do with the empty gun? Hey, let's face it, that Superman was unbeatable. <laughs> I don't know why we ever bothered. What else are we going to do? We're thugs. Uh, you better believe I mean, it. once you're established as a thug, you can't change. The people won't let you. They only see you that way. Yeah, they label you. It's like that, oh, hey, hey, guy's got a square head. He must be a thug. <laughs> yeah, yeah, or, 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 or he's got an enormous egg-shaped head. He must be a mastermind. <laughs> 
I don't see any reason to leave Metropolis just because of Superman. My roots are here, my friends, family. I'm very comfortable. It's my home. Every city breeds a certain kind of criminal. In New York, it's muggers. Chicago, gangsters. Metropolis, evil masterminds trying to take over the world. So, you want the story? I'll give you the greatest story of destruction the world has ever known. This is an ultimatum from the Spider Lady. I have perfected the reducer ray machine. The hour of destruction will be three o'clock this afternoon. This apparatus generates a secret ray which breaks down your component atoms and reassembles them wherever I desire. I built it for one purpose, to dispose of Superman. He didn't die. I ask you to kill Superman, and you're telling me you couldn't even do that one simple thing. But there's one mastermind more evil, more twisted, more determined than all the others put together. Good evening, Warden. I think these two men should be safe here with you now so they can get a fair trial. Who is it, Superman? Lex Luthor, the greatest criminal mind of our time. Of our time? We must move to our final headquarters in the highest mountains. After that, we'll take off in our spaceship, of which we'll rain terror upon our earthly enemies. Is that how a warped brain like yours gets its kicks? By planning the death of innocent people? No. By causing the death of innocent people. What most people don't realize is that Lex Luthor used to be friends with Superman back when he was still Superboy. And then one day, Luthor's laboratory caught on fire and Superboy blew it out with his super breath. Unfortunately, and this is the sad part, some of the chemicals spilled on Luthor's head and he lost all his hair. And next day, when he went to school, all the kids laughed at him. Isn't that a great story? There's no need to tread lightly upon my feelings. I'm the first one to admit that Superman is my arch enemy and that he alone stands between me and my goal, but I shall find a way to deal with him. Superman's biggest arch enemy? Tell you one thing, it's not Luther. Overrated. He's a warped scientific genius, I'll give him that. But lately, why, he's just becoming a, a parody of himself. Yeah, it's very sad, very sad. Don't feel bad, Mr. Luthor. It almost worked. I mean, California almost fell in a rainy ocean. Millions of people was almost killed. If it hadn't been for the guy Superman, it overgrown voice. I want my Liberace record back tonight. I think the problem with a lot of the uh, other evil geniuses is they lack patience. They want to take over the world, and they want it Friday. It's just not that simple. It's very important to start slow, I think take over your neighbor, your wife. I mean, some of these guys, they want to rule the world. They can't even control their own kids. What we have is a program to get to the kids before they become thugs or masterminds. Absolutely. You see, we get to the root of the problem, whereas Superman... Oh, Superman will let a problem fester and grow till it gets way out of hand. See, we try to reach these kids and tell them that whatever plans they may have to take over the world... As good or as original as they think it is. Right, that these are just doomed to failure, and we want them to consider how unpleasant that can be. You know what hell is? No. Hell is a two-by-two two cell, not enough room to lie down. And that's what being a mastermind gets you. Don't you smile when you look at me! You know why he's so tough on you? Because he's seen kids just like you make mistakes. And he doesn't want to see it happen again, am I right? That's right! I'm doing this out of compassion! You're not listening! It can be jarring, but it's the only way. Well, it might not be the only way. Um, it was our first idea. Usually your first idea is your best, though. Oh, yes. Yes, absolutely. So what is it that keeps these masterminds going? Determination? No. Insatiable thirst for power? Well, kind of, but that's not my point. What really keeps these masterminds going is one simple fact. Superman is not perfect. My x-ray vision has been destroyed. 
must be the effect of that meteorite. No. That door and the closet are lined with lead for use in certain experiments. Even X-rays won't pierce lead. In the heart of Metropolis's Chinatown, only a few blocks from City Hall, is the Lead Line Shop, an establishment which caters to a clientele of criminals and masterminds. Despite its owner's claims, the store specializes in goods designed to harm Superman. We, we protect people here, and if people want our kind of protection, they come to us. They know who we are, we know ours, and we take care of ours, you know. And we're not breaking any laws. We're, we're helping to fulfill the law. And, you know, that, that's the way we are. We, we believe in America. And the right to worship the God you fear. Or anybody like that. You see what that sign says? Plain English. Warning. It is illegal to use these products for the purpose of evil. And I wholeheartedly agree with that. What else can I do? This is a free country. Thanks to Superman. <laughs> In the far corner of the lead line shop is the substance most dangerous to Superman. Superman is vulnerable to kryptonite. So, my theory is this. If I can get Superman as close to this as you are, he fainted. If I get it closer, he's dead. Look here. This is kryptonite. Now watch this. Did you see that? Did you see it? He gets crabby. He gets crabby when I bring out kryptonite. And so listless. I mean, he won't do a blessed thing when I bring this out. Watch this. Look at this. See there? Kryptonite. Lift up the Nova. Now. For those of you considering the purchase of kryptonite, remember, know your kryptonite. Today, there are plenty of sleazy retailers out there who will tell you that one type is as good as another. This is a fraudulent claim. Don't be fooled by it. Gold kryptonite robs you of your superpowers. That is, if you're Superman. <laughs> Green kryptonite makes you drowsy, inert, and eventually destroys you. Kryptonite. Red kryptonite. Now that's the unpredictable stuff. It could turn you into bizarre forms and shapes. It could turn you into twins or a giant ant. Anything. One final word of warning. If the kryptonite is not properly and clearly labeled, take your business elsewhere. Thank you. Superman's 50th anniversary will continue. In 1938, when Superman first appeared, he was really something that had never really been done before. Jerry Siegel and Joe Schuster, who created him, had been trying for several years to sell the concept and sell the concept of a superhero. They'd done work for DC Comics, but nobody had ever quite defined the character in just that way, the superpowers, the costume. It all came together for the first time in Superman. My son. It is forbidden to you to interfere in human business. One thing I do know, son, and that is it you is are here for a reason. It is forbidden for you to All those things I can do, all those powers, it is and I couldn't even save her. You know, sometimes you think you really know everything about someone, but then you realize that you hardly know them at all. We all know Superman, the hero who saves us when we're in trouble, but what do we know about how he feels? What's he thinking? Is he made of steel inside? Is he invulnerable to love? What do we know about Superman, the man? Superman doesn't ever mean to hurt anybody. He just, he just hurts them enough to stop them from doing bad things. He's really rich. He has many girlfriends. He can even play a guitar. Superman is just the greatest guy I know. Maybe one clue to Superman's character lies in his early years on Earth. Because even during those happy boyhood days in Smallville, living with Ma and Pa Kent, his adopted parents, the young superhero was confused. Clark, what is it? Mom, 
Why am I different from all the other boys? Percival, heavens, is that what's bothering you? You had me scared for a minute. Thought maybe you was coming down with the measles or something. But, Mom, why am I different? Why can I do things that nobody else can do? Why can I run faster, or jump higher? Why am I stronger than anybody? I'll tell you about Superman, the man. He's very lonely. Look, his planet of birth blew up. He's the only remaining member of his race. He's an orphan. He's here on Earth, a strange planet. There's no one else with powers like his. There's no one he can talk to about heat vision or the moral implications of reversing time. That's why he needs the Fortress of Solitude, so he can spend some time with his memories of Krypton. My son, you do not remember me. I am jor -El. I'm your father. Here in this, this fortress of solitude, we shall try to find the answers together. So, my son, speak. Who am I? Your name is Kalel. You are the only survivor of the planet Krypton. Even though you've been raised as a human being, you are not one of them. You have great powers. Guys alone. Plus, we treat him as an emotional dumping ground. I mean, he always gets the bad news. Never the good. Nobody ever says, hey, Superman, my cat just had kittens, or don't worry, that bridge is holding up just fine. Every little mishap, every crime, every disaster, we just dump it in his, in his lap. And nothing Superman can handle. Despite the obvious difficulties of his life here on Earth, Superman can at least take comfort in the knowledge that he is so well loved, not just in Metropolis or America, but all over the globe. I've never felt the same, but I am not a bird, and I am not a as a star-studded crowd is arriving to honor Superman on his 50th anniversary. Well, Superman's really my hey! friend, and I'm looking hey! at Hey! 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 Ah! Listen, could you make sure that Superman gets these? They're marshmallow treats. They're his favorite. It's a great night. I've, I've been looking forward to this. Uh, I have a plan uh, to destroy Superman at uh, the moment he arrives. Uh, may or may not work. Uh, can't tell you much about it. It involves zapping, but mostly I'm here to see the stars. What do you say, folks? Is this an exciting night? Yeah. In any moment, you know who's going to be here. Ah, oh, and here's the Flash. The Flash along with his date supermodel, Ava. Welcome, Flash. Welcome, Ava. How are you? How about this celebration for Superman? We all owe tremendous debt to Superman. He paved the way for the rest of us. He started it all. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, it's the curator of the Metropolis Museum, Ariel Dickinson. And look who her date is. Ladies and gentlemen, the Green Lantern. Welcome. Superman deserves it. No one's worked harder or, or saved the world more often over the last 50 years. Ladies and gentlemen, just arriving, Finn Howard, the deputy mayor of Metropolis. Hiya, Finn, come on in here. Finn Howard, deputy mayor of Metropolis. I'm the deputy mayor, did you say that? Deputy mayor of Metropolis. 
God love you wonderful people. Is this exciting? Very exciting. It's great to have you here. Thank you. I understand there's a cocktail reception and a buffet. That's I right. love buffets. The sheer freedom of choice. A little bit of this, a little bit of that. Look, I know we're on the list. Try looking under P for pear. Are you sure you call? Yes, I call. Look, this is insane. I know we're on the list. Have you, is the Spectre here? But, but Finn, Finn, what about that special honor guest who's going to be addressing that? Superman is going to be That's here. That is going to be super special. Yeah. I'm thrilled to be here. This is very exciting. Superman's going to be here in a few minutes, and his fans are going to get a chance to look at him, maybe even talk to him. I know what I'm going to say if I get a chance to talk to him. I'm going to say, Superman, thank you for furthering the cause of truth, justice, and the American way. I can't, I can't say that to him. That's stupid. Um, I'll say, Superman, thank you for always being there whenever we needed you. Boring. Is that boring? Has he heard that a million times? I'll say, Superman, thank you. <laughs> no, that's terrible. Um, I'll just say some unoriginal thing, and I'll get it over with quickly. But he'll understand, because he's Superman. Ladies and gentlemen, I just received word by a telepathic vision that Superman's arrival will be momentarily delayed. Oh. Very sorry, but my rate of accuracy is 97%. In the meantime, is Larry Steven here? Look, up in the sky! It's a bird! Yeah!